Uh, when you like a sequence, you keep it. And like, I guess my question was, like, if you don't like something, like, how soon can you tell? Like, do you, is it like 12, 12 images later than you? Yeah, uh, yeah, roughly. Well, they call it line testing, right? Mm. So what you would do is you would do a sequence, and then you would shoot it, and then you run it, mm. and you make sure the animation flows very nicely. Right. I use a style of animation. There's two styles in classical. This is getting technical now. But there's in-betweening, where you would draw keyframe poses. Mm. So a pose, let's say if my hand is up here, yeah, yeah. and then my hand is down here, right. those are keyframes. Mm. Everything in between, so if I'm waving like this, uh. becomes an in-between. Oh, okay. So, you know, an animator may draw this pose and this pose, and then right. give it to another animator, and then the animator fills in the in-between poses. Oh, okay. I don't work I that way. Um, mm. The way I work is I start here, and I draw mm. the next drawing here, yeah. here, mm. here here and here mm -hmm. until I'm here. Mm -hmm. So that's called straight ahead animation. Mm -hmm. And with that, there's a certain magic you can create if you get it right. Uh, but there's also a level of, you know, wasted time if you don't get it right. Because I've gone from here and I've drawn 12 drawings to get to here. But if for some reason the movement is weird and it goes like this, right, right. you have to throw it away, right? Mm -hmm. Or you just have to redo it. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're in between here and you have a drawing here and you do all the in-betweens, you're more likely to get uh, get what get you perfect. want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the nice thing about this idea of straight ahead is that sometimes you can create a really beautiful motion and, and fluidity that mm -hmm. you can't get from the in between it, mm -hmm. right? So the straight straight ahead animation creates some movements that just sort of become more natural, mm -hmm. right? And um, I practiced enough with the animation that I'm able to do that. And when I animate, I'm using a black pen, mm -hmm. um, so there's not a lot of it's not very forgiving. Right? It was a pencil, you can erase it. With a black pen, you can't. Right, right. That's what so, I'm thinking. So I, I do a lot of recycling, uh, essentially, <laughs> if, if I do mess up. Um, but essentially, I've gotten to the point where I just sort of know how it's going to, to work. And I've gotten really lucky that when I do something, it, it, and more, more than not, it, does, it works quite well. Mm -hmm, right. So I guess uh, let me ask you some more, a few more technical questions for sure. uh, uh, aspiring animators or animators who want to try their own uh, crafts. Right, so right. Uh, what kind of uh, equipment like cameras do you use uh, to shoot this documentary and how many hours of footage do you have and, and okay. number of uh, uh, frames like animation, anima animated frames. Right. Yeah. So the great thing about this documentary is that yeah. we did combine animation with the live action. Mm -hmm. And um, with the live action, we shot probably 200 hours of interviews. And that's a lot of interviews to sit through to make an 85-minute film. Mm -hmm. So um, with animation, you don't have that luxury to, to overdo animation, because mm -hmm. animation costs money and it yeah, takes time. I, right. So you need to know exactly what you're doing with animation mm -hmm. as you're doing it. And, mm -hmm. and you have to pre-plan that. Right. So you script it? Uh, like you know, ex sometimes you storyboard it. Storyboard it or right, right. sometimes um, when I was doing some sequences, I would straight ahead animate it, like mm -hmm. I did with the yellow sticky notes. Mm -hmm. But I had a, it is always up here. It's always in my mm -hmm. head what I'm doing and where I'm going with it. Mm -hmm. So um, the idea is that uh, with, with the live action, we shot that using a Panasonic HVX200. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was an HD camera and it captured HD. So when we do the animation, we also have to do the animation in, in HD as well. Mm -hmm. um, but the great thing about the animation is that we did utilize techniques like paint on glass. I had uh, Louise Johnson uh, did some paint on glass animation. So she actually would go under the camera right. and she would paint the drawings under the camera. And as she would do it, she would repaint the next drawing over top of it and move the paint. Um, so it creates a very dreamlike and very beautiful sort of mm -hmm. sense of, of imagery. Um, whereas I also did things like where I, paint, I um, would animate on a chalkboard. So there's a sequence in the film where I animate on a chalkboard. Mm -hmm. So each drawing I would draw. When you animate also on a physical chalkboard, not on a, a glass. physical chalkboard mm -hmm. with chalk. Right, right. And uh, I would draw an image, and mm -hmm. then I would erase it, then I would draw the next image, erase mm -hmm. it, draw the next image, so that you get this kind of movement going on a chalkboard. Mm -hmm. And I would shoot all that with a Canon um, SLR, so a digital SLR. Right, right. And I think it was, a, it was a 40D I was using. Um, mm -hmm. And that would just capture the drawings in a high enough quality, so when I brought them into Final Cut Pro to edit, mm -hmm. Um, you know, we're able to, to get a really high quality image because essentially what you're taking is uh, a still image that's double the size of HD. So I would shoot quite large. Mm -hmm. And that would allow us to be able to crop in and crop out if mm -hmm. we needed to. But uh, essentially, yeah, we, we utilized as, as many different techniques of animation as we could in the documentary to give it a, a really kind of cool flavor and flair, mm -hmm. um, something that's not normally seen. If you watch a lot of documentaries, you see a lot of motion graphics 
or After Effects work. Right, yeah, and computerized. Uh, computerized, and, and yeah. to me it's just, it's, it's almost too slick, it's almost mm-hmm. too clean. Mm-hmm. Um, I like a level of art, artistry when I, when I animate and when I create, mm-hmm. and, you know, for me, you know, I like the idea that it can be different styles, it can be a, a sort of a, a candy shop or mm-hmm. an eclectic mix of animation as opposed to one slick style. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's just happened to work for me in this film. Um, next film I make, it may be a different story, but uh, it sort of works for me this time around, and i definitely work on it again. Right. So final question. Uh, sure. So, uh, Jeff, uh, what, uh, what words of advice would you give an aspiring uh, animator or documentary filmmaker? Uh, so, um, with uh, yellow sticky notes, you know, being on YouTube um, and reaching like 1.4 million mm-hmm. views, what's really uh, amazing about that is that, um, you know, all these people see the film and then they're inspired by the film because they can relate to the film or they like the technique used in the film. And so I get a lot of teenagers um, sort of emailing me or messaging me and asking me, well, how did you do that? I want to I become an animator. I want to mm-hmm. take animation as a career. Or um, another aspect is I get um, some older people mm-hmm. who haven't painted in 10 or 20 years, mm-hmm. and they, they want to pick up a paintbrush again and just paint, and they tell me that, you know, I've inspired them in some way to pick up a paintbrush and create again. And I think as a filmmaker, you know, that's the greatest reward that, uh, you know, we can receive from, mm-hmm. an, uh, you know, an audience, is that they want to go out and create film. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's just the most fulfilling thing I can think of, you know, and the reason why I create film is, is to help inspire others to want to find their own creative paths and their own mm-hmm. creative outlets. So, you know, when a, when a student or, you know, an aspiring animator comes to me and says, okay, I want to become an animator, what do I need to know? Um, the most important thing I tell them is to observe. Observe from life, right? Like, mm-hmm. watch things around you. Watch the birds. Watch people walking. Um, look at wildlife, right? Like, look at the plants. Look at the landscapes. Um, because animation is the illusion of life. We're trying to create that illusion of life, right? We're trying to create that magic of movement. And in order to do that, you need to know how things move and how people move. And so it really just starts with the basics of just watching and observing around you. Um, And then the idea of once you've observed enough, you can pick up a pencil or a pen Mm -hmm. and try to recreate that through movement and through motion. It's a lot easier to, to take a, a video camera and take the lens cap off and point and shoot at things, mm-hmm. but you still need to understand the idea of composition. You still need to understand the idea of storytelling and the idea of, of, of turning the, the imagery into a film. Um, so that's, that's the biggest thing is kind of like sort of inspiring others that it's one thing to kind of take the lens cap off, off a camera and to shoot, but it's one thing to sort of personally reflect in what they're trying to create that it, it, it creates a personal story or it creates the story they want to tell. And whether that be through animation or whether that be through, um, you know, filmmaking, narrative, mm-hmm. live action, um, it's really up to the, the person. Mm-hmm. But I think just for me, just the idea that, you know, a, in any way my work can inspire others to want to mm-hmm. create is, is really what I aspire to as a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, and I usually tell um, animators that they want to sort of move, uh, or aspiring animators, that they want to become animators, you know, always draw. Draw every day. Draw mm-hmm. everything. Um, draw your cat. Yeah. Draw, your, draw your dog. And then, you know, if you're really serious about it, pick up some animation books. You know, there's mm-hmm. some amazing animation books out there. There's one called The Illusion of Life, and that was written mm-hmm. by um, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson. Um, and uh, that, that one's, you know, a Bible of animation, essentially. Mm-hmm. And read through that. You know, understand how animation has been made throughout the years. Not, the concepts haven't changed. Right? You know, people are still making animation the same way they made it 100 years ago. Right? You know, one mm-hmm. frame at a time. And that, to me, is the beauty of animation. Right. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Jeff.